Now that we have defined hyperbolic functions and that we've seen its basic properties, let's look at the inverse hyperbolic functions. Starting with the hyperbolic sine, uh, which was defined as the difference of e to the x over 2 and e to the negative x over 2. And here is a graph that we had found in the previous video. So you see that um, this is a uh, one-to-one -one function on the real line whose domain and range uh, are the entire real line and therefore we can uh, define its inverse function and graphically to obtain the graph of the inverse function we just uh, reflect the graph of the function about the line y equal x so this is what we obtain and the function uh, the inverse function is going to be called hyperbolic arc sine, so arc sine h x and it is defined as an uh, inverse function is usually defined so y is arc sine h x if and only if sine h of y is x and here we have no restriction or on x or on y since um, the function sine h x is one to one on the real line so let's try to reformulate that a little bit and we will see that uh, we can express this function in a different way in terms of more familiar functions. So we start with the right hand side of uh, this if and only if statement. We have x is equal to sine h of y and by definition sine h of y is e to the y minus e to the negative y over 2. So another way to rewrite this same equality is that e to the y minus e to the negative y is equal to 2x or in other words e to the y minus e to the negative y minus 2x equals 0. If I multiply this equation by e to the y I multiply by a non-zero number and therefore um, I'm obtaining an equivalent equation so I get e to the 2y which is the square of e to the y minus 1 because when I multiply e to the negative y by e to the y I get e to the 0 which is 1 minus 2x e to the y all this should be equal to 0 letting u equal e to the y the first term is u squared then I have minus 1 then I have minus 2x u reordering the term I get u squared minus 2x u minus 1 equals 0 which I can consider as a quadratic equation in the variable u where x is a parameter. So what can we say about this quadratic equation? It's discriminant, right? this b squared minus 4ac that you plug inside the square root when you're using the quadratic formula uh, is positive because in this, square, in this uh, case b squared is the square of negative 2x so it's 4a squared and then minus 4ac gives me plus 4 so I get 4x squared plus 4 which is a strictly positive number so we're going to get two real roots for u using the quadratic formula so namely u can be minus b plus or minus the square root of delta over 2a in this case that means 2x plus or minus square root of 4x squared plus 4 over 2 inside the square root I can factor out 4 so when I pull this 4 out of the square root I get a 2 and therefore this can be uh, seen as 2x plus or minus 2 square root of x squared plus 1 all of this over 2 cancelling the 2 we get x plus or minus square root of x squared plus 1 but in fact these two roots uh, only one of them really fits our picture because you see that u here is e to the y which should be a positive number so this quantity here has to be positive and square root of x squared plus 1 is greater than square root of x uh, sorry uh, greater than square root of x squared which is absolute value of x so we have x plus or minus something greater than uh, the absolute value of x and therefore for this to be positive we have to pick the positive sign therefore y is arc sine h of x if and only if e to the y is equal to x plus square root of x squared plus 1 which we can write as y is a natural log of x plus root of x squared plus 1 which is well defined for any x because 
the square root of x squared plus 1 is greater than absolute value of x, and therefore x plus root of x squared plus 1 is positive. And so we have established that the um, hyperbolic arc sine function is equal to the natural log of x plus root of x squared plus 1. So that gives us, among other things, a way to calculate the derivative of this function. So if I differentiate this function, then I get why well, I have natural log of some function, so I get 1 over this function multiplied by the derivative of the function inside. And the derivative is derivative of x is 1, derivative of the root of x squared plus 1. This is again a composite, so I use a chain rule again. Get the derivative of the square root, 1 over 2 square root. Evaluate it at the function inside, so that's 1 over 2 square root of x squared plus 1. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, which gives me 2x. So I get 2x over 2 square root of x squared plus 1. I can um, simplify the 2s and I obtain what is written here, 1 plus x divided by root of x squared plus 1. Now what we have in the parenthesis, we can rewrite as one fraction with denominator root of x squared plus 1. If I do that, what I obtain is square root of x squared plus 1 plus x, all of this divided by root of x squared plus 1. In that case, you see that in the parenthesis we have at the numerator x plus root of x squared plus 1, which is what appears at, at the denominator of the first fraction. Cancelling this out, this out, what remains is 1 divided by root of x squared plus 1. And so this is our derivative. So we have obtained that the derivative of the hyperbolic arc sine function is 1 over root of x squared plus 1. This is a particularly interesting observation if we turn this formula around and write it in integral form. Specifically, that the entire derivative of 1 over root of x squared plus 1 is this hyperbolic arc sine function. So for instance, we can apply this new formula to calculate this kind of integrals, like the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over root of 16t squared plus 9. Well, here I have a square root of a square plus a positive uh, number and uh, we can try to apply this formula that we have just established and to do, match this formula I need to have square root of a square of the variable plus 1 so the first thing will be to factor out the 9 inside the square root in order to get this plus 1 if I do that I get 9 multiplied by 16 t square over 9 plus 1. And this 16 t square over 9, I can write that as the square of 4 sort of t. Pulling out the 9 out of the square root, I get a 3. And I obtain this integral of 1 over 3 multiplied by square root of 4 t over 3 squared plus 1. So now the natural thing to do is to um, use substitution where u is 4t over 3 in order to have the square of the variable uh, instead of the square of 4t over 3. So we do that, then du is of course 4 thirds of dt, which means we, that we can replace dt by 3 fourths of du. And then if I pull out 1 third, my integral is 1 third, which comes from the 3 at the denominator, multiplied by Integral, an integral where I replace dt by 3 fourths of du and pull out the 3 fourths. And then what remains is the integral of du over square root of u squared plus 1. And because I use substitution in a definite integral, I have to change the bounds of integration. When t is 0, u is also 0. And when t is 1, u becomes 4 thirds. So the upper bound of integration becomes 4 thirds. The 1 third times 3 fourths is just 1 fourth. And now we can uh, apply the formula we have just established. An entire derivative of 1 over square root of u squared plus 1 is the hyperbolic arc sine of u. So we obtain 1 fourth of the hyperbolic arc sine that we evaluate between 0 and 4 third. And since we have seen that the hyperbolic arc sine is 0 at 0, what we obtain is simply 
one fourth of arc sine h of four third. Now let's see what we can say about the inverse function for the hyperbolic cosine. This is what the hyperbolic cosine looks like. This is uh, what uh, we have seen in the previous video. You see that in particular the, it takes values that are greater or equal to 1. It is defined on the entire real line, but it is not 1 to 1. So, as we know, to define the inverse function, we need to define the inverse function of a 1 to 1 function. And therefore, we are not going to take the inverse function of the uh, hyperbolic cosine defined on the entire, entire real line, but only um, the inverse function of a restriction of the hyperbolic cosine to an appropriate interval on which it is 1 to 1. A natural choice here is to restrict the hyperbolic cosine to the positive reals, well, non-negative reals to be more specific, um, so simply to this blue branch. And then, of course, the function becomes 1 to 1, and we can consider its inverse function. Graphically, to obtain the graph of this inverse function, we're going to take the reflection of that blue graph about the uh, line y equal x. What we obtain looks like this, and this is uh, the hyperbolic arc cosine function that is defined as the inverse function of the restriction of the hyperbolic cosine to the non-negative reals. So in other words, just like we have discussed uh, in general when we discussed inverse functions, y is the uh, hyperbolic arc cosine of x if and only if the hyperbolic cosine of y is equal to x and y is positive which means x is going to be um, in particular greater or equal to 1 because x is equal to an hyperbolic cosine and we have already observed that the range of hyperbolic cosine is 1 to infinity just like for the hyperbolic um, arc sine, we can try to rephrase this and to rewrite this function in terms of more familiar functions. Uh, again, starting from the observation that x is the hyperbolic cosine of y, which by definition is e to the y plus e to the negative y over 2. Just like before, uh, we can rewrite that as 2x equal e to the y plus e to the negative y, or equivalently, e to the y plus e to the negative y minus 2x is equal to 0. We use the same trick as before, multiplying by e to the y, I'm multiplying by a non-zero number, I obtain an equivalent equation, and setting again u equal e to the y, I get u squared minus 2xu plus 1 equals 0. That's a quadratic function of a known u with parameter x. If I look at it as a quadratic function in u, I can look at the discriminant, which of course depends on x. It's a square of negative 2x, so 4x squared, minus 4 times the product of the other two coefficients, which in this case gives me minus 4. Factoring out the 4, we get 4 multiplied by x squared minus 1. Now here we have to remember that x is um, hyperbolic cosine of y, which is at least 1. Therefore, this x squared minus 1 is at least zero. Therefore we get a non-negative discriminant and the corresponding uh, solutions for u are 2x plus or minus the root of the discriminant which is 2 square root of x square minus 1 all this divided by 2a in this case 2 simplifying the 2's we obtain x plus or minus the root of x square minus 1 but now, remember that u was e to the y, and y is positive. So u is at least e to the 0, which is 1. That means u is going to be uh, greater or equal to 1. And to achieve that, we need to pick the positive sign here. And therefore, we obtain that e to the y must be equal to x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. An equivalent way to write that is that the... Um, hyperbolic arc cosine of x is a natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus 1. Of course, because x, um, to start with, was hyperbolic cosine of y, x is greater or equal to 1, which makes, makes this function uh, well-defined. 
Now that gives us a way to calculate the derivative. So we have derivative of the natural log of a function. We get 1 over the function multiplied by the derivative of the function. And the derivative of the function uh, is easy to obtain. It's 1 plus, similarly um, to what we explained in the previous case, the derivative of x squared minus 1 divided by 2 square root. So we get 2x over 2 square root of x squared minus 1. The 2 cancels out, and this is what we get. Just like before, we can write what's in the parentheses as one fraction, and we obtain x plus square root of x squared minus 1, all of this divided by square root of x squared minus 1. Just like before, the numerator of the what is in the parentheses cancels with the denominator of what we have in the first fraction, and we obtain just 1 over root of x squared minus 1, which is the derivative of our hyperbolic arc cosine function. So this is what we have, and just like before, the um, interpretation that is most useful for this formula is the integral form of this. In other words, that an antiderivative of 1 over root of x squared minus 1 is the hyperbolic arc cosine of x, up to a constant, of course. So for instance, if I was to find an antiderivative of 1 over root of x squared minus 4, all I have to do to match uh, this formula is to have a 1 instead of the 4, and that can be achieved by factoring out the 4 inside the square root. So I get 4 multiplied by x squared over 4 minus 1. Pulling the 4 out of the square root, I get a 2. And then I have this x squared over 4 that I can write as x over 2 squared. So that suggests the change of variable u equal x over 2. In that case, of course, du is equal to dx over 2. In other words, this um, dx over 2 that we have can be replaced by du, and we obtain simply the integral of du over root of u squared minus 1, and that matches our formula. This is the arc cosine h of u, and u was x over 2, so we get arc cosine h of x over 2 up to a constant. So we could consider now um, other inverse hyperbolic functions, the um, inverse of the hyperbolic tangent um, or similarly for hyperbolic secant and cosecant and so on, but um, the most important ones uh, are the uh, hyperbolic arc cosine and hyperbolic arc sine and um, this is essentially all we will need in terms of integrals so we will leave it at that and turn to homework.